Got an Acura in the shop with a check engine light. Let's see if we can't figure out what's going on. But first, coffee. This is what we're working on today. A 2006 Acura TL with a 3.2 liter V6 engine. The complaint on this one was a check engine light. So I'm going to hook the code reader up and see what codes we have stored. Definitely nice to have a little extension on these code readers. And it looks like we have a P0159. Hopefully you can read that. So let's go grab the big scan tool and um, we'll see if we can't figure out what's going on with this. Now, before we grab the scan tool and try to diagnose this, how about a little background info? Okay, so this is a pretty straightforward J-series engine that Honda and Acura have used. This one happens to be a 3.2 liter variation, but they're all gonna be very similar the way they're set up and run. Now, of course, back here is bank one, up here is bank two, because we have six cylinders. We got one, two, and three back there. We got four, five, and six up here. The firing order on these is one, four, two, five, three, six. Now, the code we read was a P0159, and that's the computer saying, hey, there's an issue with one of the oxygen sensors. There's a slow response on it. And so, so that we're oriented, Back here, one, two, and three cylinders, that side of the engine is going to be bank one. Over here, four, five, and six, that's going to be bank two. Now, on each bank, we have a catalytic converter and two um, oxygen sensors. We can see our catalytic converter on this side. It's right here. And then one of the oxygen sensors is on the top, one is on the bottom. So one is before our catalytic converter and one is after it. This one that's before on these newer vehicles, or anything, I don't know, after 2000 or so, they switched over, instead of using an oxygen sensor before the CAT, most, um, most vehicle manufacturers use an AFR, air fuel ratio sensor, which is a little more accurate. It, it's along the same lines as an oxygen sensor, but it's not exactly the same thing. The one after the catalytic converter is definitely an oxygen sensor. And so this one is um, being used by the engine computer to control the air and the fuel mixture. The one on the back side after the catalytic converter, it's used for a little bit of um, fuel control, but mostly it wants to see how our catalytic converter is doing and make sure it's not, you know, blown apart. So on each side, we have bank one sensor one, which would be our air fuel ratio sensor over here. And then bank one sensor two would be the oxygen sensor after the catalytic converter. Over here on bank two, this would be bank two sensor one. And down at the bottom is bank two sensor two. And if I remember correctly, bank two sensor two, our oxygen sensor down there, is what the computer was saying we have a slow response. I grabbed the light so we could see that bank two sensor two oxygen sensor a little better. Right at the tip of my finger right there is where it's gonna be. Let's see if I can get a close up. So that's it, that little gold thing right in the middle. And if we follow it around, this right here should be the wiring to it and that's the plug. So this is the plug for it and that's the end of it right there. So this vehicle has four oxygen sensors and each one of them can set a different code for a slow response. So bank one, sensor one for slow response would be P0133. Bank one, sensor two for slow response would be P0139. Bank two, sensor one for slow response would be P0153. And bank two, sensor two, for slow response would be P0159. Of course, that's what we have. I went ahead and printed up a wiring diagram. This is from Honda, and it's for a slow response situation on an oxygen sensor, just like we're looking at. So I figured it would help us out so you can kind of understand what I'm looking for. So right here is going to be our oxygen sensor, and it's made up of two parts. We've got a heater and our sensor part. Now, oxygen sensors work best when they're hot, so they're required to have a heater. So that's what this is right here. So we got power coming into the heater on this side, and over here, the engine computer is providing a ground. So that's how our heater operates. The computer just grounds that and um, turns on the heater. This over here is gonna be our sensor portion. So this wire right here is our signal ground. So that's a ground for the signal. And this is our actual signal wire. So we have voltage coming in and the engine computer uses that for diagnostics. And at a certain point, our oxygen sensor starts to generate its own voltage. So it generates its own voltage internally and that voltage overtakes the voltage that's coming in here. So down here, if we look right here at this little graph, 
we can see here's a representation of what it looks like if you're looking at a scan tool or on a scope or something like that you got our voltage coming in and then when the oxygen sensor starts to work it drops down into the operating voltage or the area where it's, it operates which is typically yeah, 200 millivolts to 800 millivolts and then it'll start to work it'll go back and forth and right here at about 450 um, millivolts basically right in the middle of our operating area is stoichiometric so that's our perfect air fuel ratio mixture so when the signal drops below that it's indicating it's lean when it goes above that it's indicating it's rich and so the computer will make it go back and forth above and below that so for a slow response you know the voltage should drop down and start going into our operating area pretty fast and so this isn't representative of the actual time frame but this is kind of what the computer is looking for it wants to see it drop down in a certain time frame and start to work when it's not working properly it, it's much uh, slower getting down here to where it's supposed to be working or it'll just stay up here and so this is what the computer is flagging when it sees that it's delayed coming down here into our working area it's flagging a code so we're gonna go look on a scan tool and, and see if we can see something like this now I should mention this isn't a perfect science when these things flag a code for slow response a lot of times they're working intermittently and so that can make it difficult to diagnose but we'll go to the vehicle and see what we can figure out I'm gonna go ahead and take the scan tool and we'll do a full system scan I'll see if there are any other codes in there that can help us if not then we'll go ahead and look at some live data all right there are fault codes only one in the engine computer which is what we're concerned with let's hit the uh, report and let's see so there's our p0 there's our p0159 for our slow response the other ones are TPMS and body electrical looks like problems with the, uh, the MICU and the gauge control module that looks like either somebody unplugged something or um, could be that well, it could be an issue I see a lot of stuff um, something went bad or uh, a bad battery can also cause a lot of that stuff but we are only concerned with our p0159 so those codes are not going to help us other than that one but we already knew that one now we'll just go into the engine computer and I'll bring up some live data that I think might help all right I pulled up some data pits that I want to check out these top two data pits are going to be our AFR or air fuel ratio sensors bank one and bank two those run in milliamps we're not too concerned with them but I do want to see that they're working um, the next two data pits are going to be our oxygen sensors, our downstream, so bank 1 sensor 2, bank 2 sensor 2. Right now they're sitting at 1.43 volts, so I want to graph those and I'll probably merge them, and we'll see how they react as the vehicle heats up. I went ahead and merged the graph, so I have both oxygen sensors graphed and they're both merged. So this line right here represents both of them, but we can only see one because they're one on top of each other and then we have our heaters so most likely we'll be probably watching this for the most part because I want to see the heater amperage and I want to see what our two oxygen sensors do as the vehicle heats up all right it's on vehicles on so we'll see what happens yeah I have the wrong data pit here I'm gonna have to switch that out but right now we can see that bank two or bank one sensor two is already active. See that? So that's a good sign that that one's working, but our one that's setting a code, bank two sensor two, the green trace is not doing as much. Now it is working a little bit but nowhere near as fast as the blue one. So you can see that our blue trace starting to go rich and lean. Green trace, kind of lazy, not doing so much. It's working a little bit, but I can definitely see a pattern where it's much more sluggish than our other oxygen sensor. 
Now I'm going to look at the um, data pits for the heater. I pulled up the wrong ones, and we'll look at the ones for amperage. Here's the amperage for the two oxygen sensor heaters. You can see bank one, sensor two right here, bank two, sensor two right here. So here's our one that we're concerned with. You can see it's definitely pulling a little more amperage than that one. Not a ton, but it's pulling a little bit. Um, but what that indicates to me is that the wiring integrity is okay. Everything I've seen so far shows me that the wiring and everything is good because if um, the signals would have dropped out either all the way high or all the way low or we didn't have any amperage right here, then we would know we had a wiring integrity problem. But right now, no wiring integrity problem. The only thing I've seen so far is just a sluggish oxygen sensor. As it heats up, it definitely looks like it's working better but it doesn't look like it's working as well as bank one sensor two. I switched over to the OBD2 side of things and I graphed our two oxygen sensors, our downstream oxygen sensors, and you can see how choppy our data pids are on the OBD2 side. I definitely like the OEM side better. This is not a foolproof way of diagnosing oxygen sensors because we never know what the computer is doing to control these things, but Based on what I'm seeing so far, it just looks like we have a sluggish oxygen sensor on this Bank 2 Sensor 2, and so I think I'm going to recommend that we go ahead and replace it. Now, sometimes exhaust leaks can set codes for oxygen sensors, so that's something to be aware of. But in this case, I'm pretty sure this thing just needs a new oxygen sensor. And as always, if the video helped you out and you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.